I was going to take the juniper. No, I can't take Mother Rector being in Ireland. Lucky woman. She's in Ireland. But we're. our uh, Earth Day celebration today. <coughs> it's um, interesting that Earth Day does fall uh, on a Sunday. You know, as a boy, I used to spend every Sunday morning in the summer at a little tiny church on a little tiny lake in northern Ontario in Canada. And um, we worshiped there right by the lake, and every morning a water skier would go by, and I thought, boy, it'd be great if you fell off those skis and go back the other way. And then during the week, I'd spend time by myself, um, walking around in the land, at first hours by myself, fishing, swimming, exploring, looking at the animals, and then days, and then longer periods of time. I have no idea why my parents allowed me to do that, but I spent a lot of time myself, and that's how I began to develop uh, a personal theology listening to the clergyman on those Sunday mornings about God's love and about God's working in the world kind of made a degree of sense. But when I spent time in the world, in the forest, catching fish, swimming in a cool lake, looking at the morning fog, I really understood um, a little bit more about creation. And in my mind, the time that I spent at that lake was a little sample of what it must be like to be in the nearer presence God. And this is one of the reasons why Earth Day um, is so important for us. Now, if you think about the um, story of creation, we realize that, that uh, God made separated the heavens and the earth, he made the earth, and then he gave mankind dominion over the earth. That's what the Genesis story tells us. And I think that was really the beginning of our problem. You know, we're not responsible, uh, responsible people. And from that time on, that the word dominion began to mean different things. And we began to um, have a kind of a disregard for the earth. At first, our human ancestors saw the earth and all of the various things, fire, floods, wind, sun, rain, as being uh, uh, sort of servants of the earth. The earth was a deity. And they spent time trying to appease the earth. Sometimes the form of sacrifices, sometimes the form of offerings. But eventually, as mankind got more modern, more sophisticated, we moved from appeasing to trying to control. And then eventually we moved from trying to control the earth to actually saying, this is mine. I can basically use it any way I want to. And I think this is one of the things that we find oh, now as we, uh, as we face our Earth Day celebration this morning. The first Earth Day, anybody know when it was held? Oh, gee, you knew when it was held. I thought <laughs> That's great. 1970. And I can still remember the hype about it. It was kind of low-key. And my father saying, those tree huggers. That was the hype. <laughs> tree huggers, you know. They're not going to allow this to happen. They're not going to allow that to happen. What's going to happen with capitalism? And my dad was a little bit upset. There was no real religious sense at all <laughs> to that first um, Earth Day celebration. It was more wanting to build an awareness of um, what the earth could mean and what it should mean and, and the need to preserve it for the future. But there was also an element of um, unity and love for mankind as well. Um, now, 
in some ways, our um, Earth Day in whatever year it is, 2018, is still kind of self-centered, man-centered. <coughs> We're saying, let's do something about the Earth. Let's save the Earth so that mankind can survive. That's certainly not a bad goal, but it's very, very uh, man-centered. Our celebration this morning here as Christian people, as members of Good Shepherd, is really, really different. Psalm 24, if you're good at math, you realize that comes right after Psalm 23, <laughs> talks about the fact that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Everything in creation that we see, including us, including each other, is God's creation. And that's why we're here to celebrate this morning. There's two words really in the Old Testament that stand out in terms of um, that were used for earth. One is what we think of as the concept of earth, the se separation of the firmament from the heaven, earth as a creation, it's Eretz, which is kind of a derivative, earth is, is derived from that. The second has to do with the first man. It's, it's much more an idea that earth is, is soil and dirt and life-giving, Adama. And, and that's also what we think about today. So we think about Earth globally as our home that supports us in this vast universe. And then we think of Adamas, the fact that this land grows grass, and other land may grow grapes, and other land may be arid, and other land may be good for um, uh, fishing. Our celebration is of both words today. The New Testament um, talks about the fact that we don't have dominion over the earth. Think of the verse. Um, anybody remember the verse in terms of who's going to inherit the earth? Remember? The meek. The meek. The meek, exactly. And meek in this case doesn't necessarily mean shy, withdrawn, hiding. Meek means really, in the way that it's used in the New Testament here, um, faithful. Almost to the point of being stalwart, hanging in there, not necessarily reaching out and evangelizing, but being faithful and moving forward. The meek, the faithful, shall inherit the earth. The equation basically is God is creator, the earth is God's, we are faithful in our following God, therefore we inherit, we receive the blessings that are um, associated with the earth. Now, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, as you look around, does anybody here um, think about the nature of God when they walk up to this place? As you look around, we're reminded, to me, at least I'm reminded, of the nature of God. The Old Testament and the New Testament both say very specifically that the earth reminds us of the nature of God. Job states at one point that if people had any intelligence at all, any insight, they would understand that the animals and the world around them are pointing to the Creator, but they somehow miss that point. The essence of the Creator is visible in the creation. And the book of Romans teaches us something that's, that's pretty important also. Since the beginning of time, it says, God can be known in creation. Romans also goes on, and this is a paraphrase, basically, that the ignorance of mankind ignores the fact that God can be known in creation. <coughs> Real quickly, as you look around here, what are some of the characteristics that being up here on this mountain, what are some of the characteristics that you could sense about the Creator from being up here? New life. Pardon? New life. New life. Yes. Anything else? His majesty, when you look around, we seem so small in the majesty. This black shirt is hot. <laughs> the warmth of his love, it's so apparent up here. And the magnificence of creation and all that's around us. Mankind, and I guess me specifically, maybe you, are all a bit dense. Christ has been personified for us. The working of God has been shown to us in so many different ways, and yet it's still sometimes difficult to really incorporate this into our lives. And so what God did, this is our reminder, 
when mankind could not get it from looking at the beauty of creation, brought it a little bit more down to our level. The person of Christ embodied his love in another human being, hoping um, that we could understand. And so mercy, the power, the order, all of that is seen in Christ. So from showing us who he is as creator and sustainer in the world, he then moves to show us who he is through his son Jesus Christ. Today we are looking at creation as Christians, looking at creation to understand the love of God as it's personified in the person of Christ. We look to see the creator in creation, but we remember today that the creator draws close to us through his son Jesus Christ. Earth Day for us is not just a call to make sure that the species of man um, survives, but it's a reminder for us to recognize the Creator working in the world around us and in our day-to-day -day lives personally through the person of Christ. It's a reminder to love the Creator as His creature. And it's an example for us of how, just how close the Creator is. It's a time to worship the Creator and it's a time for us to draw close. Now in closing, I'd like to um, just read two verses of my all-time favorite hymn. We used to sing this at the little church. Two hymns that we used to sing. One was called, Will Your Anchor Hold? Which was really a good thing to think about when you're trying to fish and you're in a windstorm. You're cold to but this one, you may remember. We don't sing it too much in church anymore, I don't think. But it's, Fairest Lord Jesus, I just want to read two verses. Because to me, this sums up Earth Day. It sums up the idea that we are celebrating our relationship with God, not only in creation, but through the person of Christ. Fair are the meadows, fairer still the woodlands, robed in the blooming garb of spring. Jesus is fairer, Jesus is pure, who makes the woeful heart to sing. All fairest beauty, heavenly and earthly, wonderfully, Jesus is found in thee. None can be nearer, fairer or dearer than thou, my Savior, art to me. Happy birthday. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat>